Welcome everyone to Have History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and today I want to look at the hit series 1883. I love watching movies and TV shows depicting this era, and I wanted to share my thoughts with you about this show and its historical accuracy. Enjoy. This show depicts the journey of the Dutton family that hail from Tennessee on their journey from Texas to Montana, where the show Yellowstone takes place. We first meet the Duttons, but we quickly get introduced to a band of mostly German immigrants wanting to travel to Oregon. This is the perfect makeup for a group of immigrants in 1883. In the 1880s, 1 1.5 million Germans came to the United States. 250,000 of them came in 1882 alone. So having this group of immigrants as the majority of a wagon train headed for Oregon is a perfect choice. As the series progresses, we get flashbacks to the Civil War. As anyone who watches this channel knows, that is my field of study, so I do have a critique. James Dutton is supposed to be from Tennessee. I assume he joined a Tennessee regiment. However, when they show him get captured by Union forces at Antietam, by General George Meade, no less, you can clearly see the Dunker Church in the background. The only Tennessee regiments in the Army of Northern Virginia were an Archer's Brigade, part of A.P. Hill's division, which were on the Confederate right, confronting the Union soldiers who crossed Burnside Bridge. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is highly unlikely that he would have been captured on the other side of the battlefield. To get a better understanding of the Battle of Antietam and the units involved, go watch my animated battle map for that engagement. Another aspect of the Civil War, or at least the fallout from the war, was trauma experienced by soldiers. One thing I have seen in recent years when Civil War veterans are depicted is the increased attention to PTSD. Every person deals with war differently, and the night terrors of Captain Shea Brennan, portrayed by Sam Elliott, is a great example of the effects of the war on its participants. If you'd like to learn more about Civil War soldiers and PTSD, please check out my video on that subject. James Dutton and Shea Brennan are both Civil War veterans, but from different sides. The American West produced an environment where various groups of people from different backgrounds interacted together. In this case, we see German immigrants traveling with a Confederate veteran and two Union veterans. The other Union veteran being Thomas, who was a Buffalo soldier. Although these interactions were not always peaceful, it forced these groups to sometimes rely on one another for help. At one point in the show, it is claimed that it was illegal for those immigrants to swim in their home country. I found no evidence for that, and numerous websites have went up explaining that at one point a town in Germany banned swimming. One has to remember that Germany was not unified until 1871, so one town's ban would not have impacted the entire area known as Germany today. This interaction between the wagon train and the Comanche is brilliant. I'm not sure I have ever seen this depicted in film or TV. We've become accustomed to the old westerns where violence erupts everywhere with Native American tribes. Although the two sides competed over resources as Euro-Americans journeyed into the west, it was very common for Native Americans to basically set up toll roads, where travelers paid a toll either in money, but much of the time in some kind of goods, to pass through a piece of territory. The fact that they show this instead of the stereotypical violence between the two groups speaks to the historical accuracy that the creators of the show held themselves to. Only 362 pioneers were killed by Native Americans between 1840 and 1860 on the Oregon Trail. Nearly 400,000 people traveled along the Oregon Trail, and the amount of people actually killed in Native American attacks were extremely small compared to how many actually traveled along that path. Most of their interactions with different tribes was about trade. Elsa Dutton, the main character who narrates the series, quickly turns from a dress-wearing lady into a rough-and-tumble woman of the frontier. I think that speaks to reality. When we learn about history, we usually get a generalized portrayal of the era. And that's okay, as long as you know that it is much more complicated than that. In any era, there are ideas about what the ideal woman should be like, and many women attempted to portray themselves as such, but few could be like that 100% of the time. For instance, Let's take New York middle-class women in this era. They were impacted by Queen Victoria and ideas of how the proper woman should act, but very few women or families could meet that idealized version. New York middle-class women, although they might not work in a factory like lower-class women, they would work at family businesses, run boarding houses, or other jobs like that. 
What I'm attempting to explain is that although there were ideas of what a woman was supposed to act like, the reality was far different than what was expected. On a journey into the American West, women were heavily involved in the daily routines of the wagon train and fighting off bandits, aspects that were supposed to be unbecoming of a woman in that era. Speaking of bandits, this was another aspect that I was happy to see in the series. As I said earlier, Native American attacks were far less frequent than most people think, but attacks by bandits were very common. Wagon trains were easy prey for outlaws. In 1883, one of their biggest problems were white bandits, and that is an excellent portrayal of the American West. I hope this video helps you understand the historical accuracy and inaccuracies in the show 1883. If you are in the least interested in the American West, please have a look at that show.